Well, we've been talking about the suffering of Jesus, and Jesus summed it up this way. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. He loves you so much, he made the greatest sacrifice. He sent his own dear son, his beloved son, to die on a cross for your sin. Why? Jesus came to pay a debt he did not owe because you owed a debt you could not pay. God treated Jesus as though he had lived your life so he could treat you as though you had lived his life. This is the great thing that took place at the cross of Calvary where he died as a substitute for us. You say, well, I don't know what this all means. What it means is you're separated from God by sin. Christ died for your sin. He rose again from the dead and now he stands at the door of your life and he knocks. If you'll hear his voice and open the door, he'll come in. You can be forgiven of all of your sins. In a moment, we're gonna receive these elements that represent the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus. And the Apostle Paul says, when you take these elements, don't do so in an irreverent manner. In other words, communion is for Christians only. You don't wanna do this if you're not a believer because the Bible says if you do so, you eat and drink judgment to yourself, almost as though you're making light of what it means. So this is only for the child of God. But if you're not sure if your sin is forgiven, if you're not confident that you'll go to heaven when you die, if you don't feel you really are a Christian yet, why don't you just pray a simple prayer with me? You could pray it out loud, you could pray it in quietly in your heart, but this is a prayer where you're asking Jesus to come into your life. So if you want him to come into your heart right now and forgive you of your sin and give you the hope of heaven, pray this after me. In fact, Matt and Lori, maybe you could pray like we're asking the folks watching to pray. Just pray these words, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner, I know that I'm a but I know that you're the Savior, but I know that you're the Savior. who died on the cross died. for me and bore my sin and rose again from the dead. I turn from my sin now and I choose to follow you, Jesus, from this moment forward. Thank you for hearing this prayer and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When Jesus was in the upper room, he took the bread. I'm holding a little wafer here, but he took the bread and he broke it. The disciples did not know it was the Last Supper. He didn't say, guys, it's the Last Supper. Let's all pose behind the table, like the mm -hmm. Leonardo da Vinci mm -hmm. painting. That's not the way it looked. It was a table that was low to the ground. They would been on pillows, uh, maybe in reclining positions. They had many Passover meals together, but something was different, mm -hmm. especially when Jesus took the bread and said, take and eat of this. This is my body, which is broken for you. They recognized at that moment that something was happening and it wasn't until later they discovered that this was their last supper on earth with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says to us, do this in remembrance of me. So if you have bread, take your bread right now and we're gonna pray and then we'll eat it together, partake of it together, remembering the death of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, you've asked us to do this in remembrance of you. And so we do that now. And we're reminded of the promise in Isaiah that says, by your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, as we think of people out there that may be suffering, that may be in pain, uh, that may need even a physical touch, we ask you to extend your healing hand toward them right now as we take this bread, remembering your broken body for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's partake together. Amen. Mm. Jesus then took the cup and he said, drink of this cup. Of course, Jesus drank of a cup as well. In fact, uh, Francis mentioned in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said to the Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. What was the cup Jesus was referring to? It was the cup of the wrath of God that he would absorb in our place. He re recoiled from that because he who was sinless, he who was holy, was gonna take upon, all the, upon himself all that was sinful and unholy, but he knew there was no other way. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now we hold this cup, 
and it's a symbol of the blood of Jesus. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So I'm gonna pray that God would cleanse all of us of our sin as we prepare to receive this cup together. Let's pray. Lord, we remember your suffering. We remember your broken body and we remember that blood that you shed. But we think of what that blood did, the blood that bought our salvation, the precious blood of the lamb that was shed for each and every one of us. Now we ask you to cleanse us as we remember you with the cup. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's partake together. Wow, beautiful. Good Friday, 2021. Mm. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.